So in the last video, I kind of showed you how to build out multiple pages in a website or like a static website. And we learned how to import various styles and kind of apply them to our sites just to help clean up our code a little bit. But one thing that we kind of noticed is that this header is copied and pasted between like all of our different uh, pages. So that if I ever wanted to come in and add another link, notice that it doesn't actually get added to my other pages because we are just copying pasting code and that code is not um, like centralized in one place so that if I make an update, it updates in every page. All right, so I hope you can kind of envision how that could be a big issue when you have 30 or 40 pages in a site and you copied and pasted a header everywhere. Imagine going to all those files and updating the header 40 times. That's not really that fun. So what we're going to try to do is to use a little bit of JavaScript to dynamically inject this HTML into our page so that we can kind of like stop repeating code all throughout our code base. So I'm going to try to show you the bare minimum that you need in JavaScript to basically achieve this. Um, there's a lot that you can learn in JavaScript. And honestly, this is going to be the most difficult topic with all the web development is actually learning the programming language of JavaScript. So I want to just introduce you to a small amount of ideas and we can build something with those ideas and then continuously loop back and just learn a couple of new things as we find that we need them. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new folder called JS and we are going to put a header.js file in there. All right, so let's do a new file called header.js. So inside of this header.js file, this is where we're going to define the JavaScript and basically create a header component and inject it into our page. So the first thing we definitely want to do is probably in the head, or actually we could do it down here at the body, but in the head, let's just import that script file. Okay. So I'm going to say script source. You have the Emmet extension installed. You can kind of just scaffold out these commands for you and it kind of helps you out. But I'm going to just going to go ahead and import this JS slash header.js file. And I'm going to put a defer attribute on here, right? So this is hopefully going to allow the script to load after all of this has been like parsed and rendered onto the page. Um, if you don't put this defer, you may run into issues where the script tries to find a particular component, but it says it doesn't exist. Another little hack for this is you could just put the script at the very end like right before the end of your body tag, people do that a lot too. So keep that in mind. But what we are going to do is just put it at the top with a deferred. And to make sure this works, I'm actually just going to do something really simple. And I'm, I don't want to get into the weeds of like what's going on here, but I'm going to put a console log. So this is how you can print something out to the screen or to your terminal. And you're going to use this all the time when you're debugging code. So definitely keep that in mind. But we'll talk about like what all this stuff means later on, because obviously this is an object that's calling a function and passing a parameter, which happens to be a string. So there's a lot of stuff that you need, like the basic understandings of JavaScript before you can actually understand this and start using it properly, I think. All right, so we know that our script's working because this printed out down here. That's pretty much the whole reason why I wanted to print that out. You can see that it prints out hello. So the first thing when it comes to JavaScript that is most important to learn is basically something called variables. All right, so a variable is a way to store information in your computer so that you can later on use that information, right? So for example, if someone's typing in a form and they wanna type in their username and password, sometimes you wanna save that information to a variable so that later on when they click a submit button, you can take the information they typed in and send it to a backend. That's just a really simple example, but uh, Any time that you need to store information, you're going to use a variable. So there's there's three ways that you can create variables in JavaScript. You can use const, um, you can use let, and you can use var. I'm not going to talk about var. It's not really used that often anymore, but you might see it. So just keep that in mind. But the main difference between const and let is uh, const means you want to declare a variable that can never change, right? So if I say const dog is equal to like rex, that means we're going to make a variable called dog and then we can never change it later on. Now the difference with, I say let cat is equal to Sally, the let can actually be changed, right? This is a variable that can be changed in the future. So let's break this down even more because there's a lot of stuff that I kind of did that I didn't explain. So first of all, this is just an expression or a statement that you have to type out to declare a variable, right? You say const, which is a keyword 
space the name of your variable. This is just like a label that you can use and you can access it later on. Um, and then you say equals, and then I'm sending it to a value, right? This could be any type of JavaScript data value. This could be a number. We could do like a decimal number if we wanted to. We could do a Boolean, so false or true. Uh, we could also do, um, this is called a string, right? So the double quotes is a string. You can also do single quotes for a string like this. So I could say Rex with single quotes. And then also a string you can do with back ticks. So this is like the character that's to the left of the number one on your keyboard. So there's different ways you can do strings. Um, keep that in mind. This, is one's, this one's gonna be really important in just a second when we use it to build up the header component. But I'm just kind of showing you a couple of different ways you can declare variables and assign them to two different uh, JavaScript data types. And all these data types have different uh, reasons why you want to use them, right? For example, a number, maybe you want to store the age of someone or maybe the amount of money they have in their wallet. In that case, you might want to use the number data type so that you can do some math on it, right? Like sales tax, you could do 100 times 0 0.10 to calculate some type of sales tax. But for right now, we're just going to focus on strings because that's what we need to use to achieve this shared header component. Um, so like I said, const and let are a little bit different. Const does not allow you to reassign a variable. So down here, if I try to do dog.buy to mainly reassign the variable to buy, if I refresh the page, you'll notice that it's going to throw an exception down to my console. And that is because I can't assign a no value to a const. Whereas if I were to try to reassign cat, this works fine, right? There's no issues. And before we dive into this more, I want to show you another keyword you can type in called debugger. And when you put this in your code and save your file and click refresh, this will actually stop a debugger in your Chrome console so that you can actually debug some things. And this is, I think, extremely important when you're first trying to learn out how to code because there's a lot of stuff going on, honestly. And if you don't step through it line by line, it could be really confusing. So you can see here, as the debugger has stopped on this line, I might have to zoom out, this is not. So this is the Chrome debugger. This is super important to understand how to use. And you can see that in this debugger, we have some script that it stopped on. So you notice here, there's like this line three is highlighted in blue. The code actually stopped there and it paused, waiting for us to give it some input. And while it's doing that, you can actually hover over some of these variables like cat and dog and see what the values are of them. And then down here, you can also see some variables as well. And then what I could do is there's some commands over here. So there's like a play button, which will just run the entire script. There's step over, which will basically go to the next line and execute it and then go to the next line and execute it each time you click it. These are like the, this is probably the most important one if you're trying to learn how to debug some code. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and click this one. And you'll see that the blue line moved on to cat equal by. Um, so we can continuously step over code and see what happens when we dive, like execute commands. So if I click it again, notice that cat is now by, and down here in our actual like scope watchers, we can see that the variable of cat became by. So what I'm trying to show you here is that you can easily step through code and see what things are happening. And this is really important to understand. But okay, so we reassigned the cat variable to buy. And that was like the whole point of this example. And we are probably going to be using that later on. Let me just go ahead and click play so that we go back to our thing. So again, there's different data types in JavaScript, right? One data type, which I should probably talk about is a object. So this one is a little bit more confusing than the other ones, which are more straightforward. An object starts with curly braces and ends with a curly brace. And then anything that you put inside these curly braces are treated as what we call properties of the object. So if you wanted to make like a person object, you could put like an age of, I don't know, 18. You could put a name of Bob. So at that point, you have like this data structure stored in a person variable, and you can actually access all those individual properties, right? So if I wanted to print out like, the age of the person, I could say person.age, or I could print out person.name. This is the convention, like the syntax for accessing a property that exists on the object. You just do the variable name dot the property. 
right, so again, let's just use the debugger real quick to make sure we understand this. So let me expand some of this. So as you can see, we have a variable down here called person that has two properties, age and name. And as we step through, it's going to print stuff down to our console down here. So at the very bottom of my screen, if I click the next button, it prints out 18. And if I do it again, it's going to print out Bob. So objects are like super important for grouping data together, right? If you want to group a particular piece of data together that's all related, such as this person object, you can use objects for that. And then also, what I didn't show you is you can actually override properties on objects. All right, so I know I talked about const means you can't override it, but that's just talking about the top level object can't be overwritten. Um, to kind of show you that, I can say person.age is equal to 20. And I'm going to print out age here. All right, let's try this again. So basically, I'm going to print out the original value of age, and then I'm going to change the value of age to 20. I'm going to print that again. So let's step through this. So we'll step through. Notice age is still 18 down here. Click it again, and it's going to move on to that next line. If I execute that line, age becomes 20. And then if we go to the next line and print it out, we print it out 18 and 20. So this is really important as well because we are going to be using this to basically change that header component in a second. All right, so that brings me to my next discussion, which is this global variable. Okay, so when you run JavaScript in your browser, there is something called a global window object. And that object has a ton of stuff on it that you can use to do who knows what. You can do a ton of stuff with this window object, right? We can use this to basically do um, grab like elements from the page if we wanted to, or add event listeners to the page if you wanted to. So keep that in mind that there's like this hidden global variable that you can use, um, and we can use it for a lot of things. All right, so there's something else I kind of want to show you all, which is really interesting. If I go back to my index file and I go to my header here, let me expand that a little bit. What you can do is I can add an ID to this, right? I can say ID of like header. And the interesting thing that happens, at least with the Chrome browser, I don't know if this is true for all browsers, but once you put an ID on a DOM element, that's going to be put as a global variable that you can access, right? So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say console log header and delete all this other stuff and go ahead and refresh my page. And if I were to step through this, down to my console, you'll notice that the header printed out, right? So we can use that to basically grab different sections of our page and dynamically inject HTML. All right, so that's what we're going to do for the header. If you can kind of envision what we just found out that we can do, we are going to do that. There's also a different way you can grab elements based on the ID. I'll show you this just so you don't think I'm just not showing you everything. You could say document dot get element by ID, and then I could have pa passed in header, and that also would have given back an object that we can use to manipulate the page. The reason I want to show this yet is because this is using like functions and I haven't talked about functions yet. So I don't want to actually dive into using that, but I will later on. So don't worry. All right. So now we need to think, how do we take this header component and extract it so that we can put it into every page really easily? So what I would suggest doing is let's just put a new div here and I'm going to give it an ID of header. So that will allow us to access that div in our JavaScript really easily. And I'm going to cut all this out because we're going to put that and dynamically inject it into this div. So going back to our header.js, I'm going to use that string using the back tick that we talked about earlier. And I'm going to paste in all of that header stuff here. Okay. Now the issue with doing this dynamically is that you lose some syntax highlighting. Uh, there is an extension in VS Code you can actually install to make this look nicer. But for the most part, if you're dealing with really small components, you probably don't care that much. But what we're doing is we're taking all of the HTML and turning it into what we call a string so that we can actually dynamically inject that into the page. So I showed you how when you put an ID on a div, you have access to that div, right? Like if you notice down here, we printed out the header. So since the ID we attach to this div is called header, all we need to do is say header dot 
Remember, header is an object, so we can access properties on that object. And then we can say inner HTML is equal to a string. So if that doesn't make sense, maybe rewind and go back. We, talk, we already talked about what an object is. Header is an object. We talked about how we can overwrite property values on the object, which this ha just happens to be a property on the DOM element. And you could print out header and you can see that there's a ton of different properties that are attached to this and you'll just learn them over, over time. But inner HTML happens to be one of those properties that we can overwrite. And if we change it, what it's gonna do is basically, basically take all of this and just plop it right in there. That's, that's what JavaScript's gonna do for us. It's gonna take all of that HTML and just dynamically put it into the div with the ID of header. All right, so I hope at this point you can see how that can help us out with cleaning up our code. So I'm gonna go ahead and click play. And let's just refresh the page and verify this works. All right, so you can see when I refresh the page, my header shows up. It does kind of jump a little bit. There's a little bit of like a delay or a lag because it has to actually load the script first and then it'll insert the header. But this is a much better approach because now all of our pages just need to have a header div on it. All right, so again, what this allows us to do is we can go into every page now instead of copying and pasting this header, we could just put a header ID and then we need to make sure we import that script, All right? So let's go back to the about page. We're gonna import a script here. And then we'll do the same thing for a post, right? We'll import the script and we'll go up a level for this one and we will get rid of the header here. All right, so now as I navigate through my pages, oh, this one has an issue. Oh, this one I forgot to put the header thing. So let's copy the header. All right, there we go. So now if I navigate through my pages, they're all using the same header that we dynamically generated in JavaScript, okay? In fact, there is a bug in our header. So let's go back to our header component here. And I'm gonna just go ahead and fix an issue. I think this needs to be a dot slash about. All right, let's just try slash about. All right, there's an issue with this, with the relative path. Um, we're, we're gonna be able to fix that later on when we actually host this on a web server, but just keep that in mind that there's a little bug with that. So I can just navigate through my different pages and you'll see that the header is consistent. And if I were to add like three links, no matter what page I go to, those links are gonna stay consistent with the header, okay? So that is basically what we can do to extract components and dynamically put them in JavaScript. Now keep in mind, if you're using like a server-side rendering language, there's usually like a template language that you're gonna use. So for example, if you're using like Shopify, they have like a liquid template. And what that allows you to do is basically in your HTML itself, usually there's like some type of fancy syntax you can use, or if you're using PHP, you could just um, dynamically include something. So I could say include header.html if I wanted to. So a lot of server-side rendering approaches allow you to just inject HTML like this. And when you basically make a request to the backend, it's gonna build up the page for the client and then send it over. But again, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible right now. There's no backend, there's no server-side rendering. This is all just JavaScript uh, and HTML and CSS. So, so I hope this kind of helps you understand a little bit about JavaScript. Again, we didn't dive deep into the JavaScript, but we will probably in the future. So I think we're going to build upon this JavaScript that I just taught you, and we are going to learn how to dynamically generate all of these based on data. Okay, so right now, if you go back to the index, this is all hard coded. We're going to learn how to map over these and like loop through them and dynamically put those on the page as well using a JavaScript approach.